haven't made an episode about the history of street medics yet. I suppose I should have started the series out with such a video, but here it is, six episodes later. This isn't going to be a comprehensive history of street medics, because to do that, I would have to delve into wilderness medicine, emergency medical technicians, anarchist first aid, and indigenous communities first aid, and much more. Today, I'm just going to attempt to give you guys an overview of what we traditionally picture as your average street medic, a volunteer in the midst of a protest, demonstration, riot, or what have you, who provide first aid and wellness care at a basic level. Hopefully the historical timeline isn't too hard to follow. Fingers crossed. Hope you enjoy. I think it's important to start out by saying that there isn't necessarily a dichotomy between street medicine and the medics who practice it and a protester. They can and do coexist. Medics were originally conceived, at least in this case, as a means to filling in the gaps where first aid was lacking. Protests can be thought of as many, or not so many, battlefields. Ergo, like combat medics during wartime, street medics are volunteers serving in areas with high pressure and very probable likelihood of injury. However, since there is no street medic certification, or formalized schooling, there are no real barriers to becoming a medic except basic on-the-ground training by more experienced street medics. As such, street medics are used to living a double life, per se. Sometimes, they are protesters and sometimes they are giving first aid. There's no hierarchy. It's all one and the same, just switching roles as an individual sees fit. Street medics first found their feet during the civil rights protests of the 1960s in America. This is why we so closely associate political activism with street medics. Medics, as is their tradition, have been traveling to natural disaster sites, as well as underserved communities everywhere for a very long time. Mutual aid is a big part of the creed street medics divide by, charging no money for their services in the field. Their only expense really comes from supplies, training, the standard training, whether a bridge for someone in healthcare already or not, is 20 hours, and travel. Most street medics adhere to some kind of anarchist political philosophy, but this isn't always the case. However, since most anarchists are very autonomous, independent, progressive, mutual aid supporters, it makes sense that the general street medic populace would overlap with that line of thinking. Most street medics are those who possess the ethos of one got their start from a humble beginning, altruism and a desire to perform humanitarian aid. Not all people had an interest in healthcare beforehand, but many do and some are even healthcare professionals. People who engage in public health are particularly inclined to be street medics. Take street medic Jeff Stein, who attended the 2008 Republican National Convention in St. Paul, Minnesota. Himself and many others came from across the country to run jail support and patch up those who were protesting in front of the RNC building, an especially turbulent place to be during election season. Unfortunately for Stein, who was doing a dual service by protesting and medicking, he was jailed for three days. Street medics have a long history of being arrested, and as such, they often have solidarity with those who are arrested, and their hesitance to engage with the police is very understandable. Most medics will include training to handle arrest. Medics like Stein, who attended Boston University and packed up half a dozen times to travel around the United States, including attending the IMF and World Bank meeting in DC, where he aided protesters and medics alike, is emblematic of the greater mission medics have had since their inception, and that is to go where the people are. There is a certain creed among street medics that adhere to standards of healthcare everywhere. You are not to turn away someone based on their allegiance. All are neutral and street medics adhere to this, but sometimes there can be disagreements between the more polemic medics who do not wish to treat those who they find morally reprehensible, 
I neither agree nor disagree with this position, but I thought I would mention it nonetheless, since street medics are intrinsically tied to social justice and egalitarian movements of a political nature. Street medics were never well established in an official network. There is no leader of the street medic mega collective. In fact, there are no big monolithic organizations that explicitly brand and market themselves in a traditional way as street medics. If anything, these organizations stray away from officiating and associating themselves with any kind of mainstream healthcare. No street medic collectives, which are by nature pretty underground to avoid negative attention, are not exactly atomized, but they are private and under the radar. Only recently have they been given attention on social media. Ask anyone in healthcare who doesn't street medic what they do, and they'll give you a weird look. Trust me, I asked one of my clinical preceptors if she knew what street medicing was, and she had no idea. Or they'll assume it has something to do with public health, which, I mean, it kind of does, to be fair, but not quite. There's no directory of street medics or their numbers, but the movement in practice hit its stride during the Vietnam War. The ensuing protests as well as the general aversion to hospitals and distrust therein, motivated by counterculture movements and police brutality, led to a rise in street medics everywhere offering their time to treat those injured in the field. Most of these people were quite young. Police would go to hospitals looking for fugitives to arrest, says Tom Hayden, founder of the Students for a Democratic Society. According to Hayden, who runs the California-based Peace and Justice Resource Center, the first street medics were healthcare students and activists who wanted to do their part in treating those hurt by police brutality, and they were the only ones with the know-how to treat emergencies like broken bones, concussions, dislocations, etc. And ever since, volunteers have been on the case. The resurgence of street medics after the heavy anti-Vietnam War protests and civil rights demonstrations was the Occupy Movement and the WTO Conference in the late 90s and early 2000s. You can even take something like the G20 meeting in Toronto as a bit of a renaissance period. Since their creations, these volunteer first aid organizations and organizers have structured themselves globally to be adjuncts to community health and wellness workers specializing in community-based care in tense situations. They even work in places that see active combat, though they don't work for the military, such as in the Gaza Strip in Palestine. Some have even established their own community health clinics, such as the Common Ground Health Clinic in New Orleans, Louisiana. Note that during disaster relief, the street medic transforms to disaster management community health workers, taking on a different task list roles, and conforming to their environment in mass disaster and unrest, not unlike the usual savoir faire. They take on a few more jobs and transform into builders of a community. In some cases, they work tangentially with other aid organizers like the CDC or WHO. Street medics are able to treat a wide gamut of simple injuries and some more complex ones, depending on their equipment and level of training, which includes basic first aid for the streets, tactics for general survival, history of street medics, and dealing with the protest environment. Some can treat bruises while others can treat gunshot wounds. EMTs are especially drawn to street medicing. A major early accomplishment of street medics was the analysis of tear gas to devise the current method of choice for decontaminating someone's skin. That process is known as mineral oil immediately followed by alcohol. They act as informal teachers too. Anne Hirschman recalls teaching others to stop the bleed in person, applying pressure to wounds to staunch the blood flow. She was there when MLK was marching. She's a nurse who treated people who have been beaten, clubbed, hosed down, attacked by dogs, and tear gassed to hell and back. These people are scholars and activists at heart. They put themselves on the line for social justice and community service causes. However, this sort of heroism in the field at the cost of activism makes more moderate and conservative medical practitioners uncomfortable. 
leading them to label medics like Hirschman and Stein radicals or liabilities. It's not unusual to see medics getting hurt by protesters, counter-protesters, and police alike. They can end up arrested. Street medics are often advocates on the ground, but this comes at a price. If they are indeed healthcare professionals and sometimes, depending on the employer, even a non-healthcare professional, they run the risk of job loss, loss of tuition or expulsion from college, and having their children removed from them if they face jail time for their actions. As such, they are well aware of the dangers of their activism. More than anything, street medics have their fingers on the pulse of social change. They might not be the direct movers and shakers, but they are the unsung helpers we could never live without. Their active independent medical care in the face of great danger and adversity is very, very admirable. I would like to read a final quote from Anne Hirschman, one that sums up everything perfectly. Quote, The first time would have been Chicago in 1968, when Mayor Richard Daley got on TV and said, They must be planning violence. They brought their own medics. We had made an impact. Now, I don't think anybody plans a demonstration without counting on the fact that they're going to be street medics in attendance. Guys, thank you very much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you really enjoyed looking into the history of street medics with me and learning a bit more about what got us here today. It's not a super detailed history, and parts of the history are a little spotty, but then again, I think I've given you a little bit to chew on, and I really hope that you guys will join me again next episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around. Have a good day. Sweet.